Everybody. Welcome to Harvest Christian Center. I'm Pastor Beverly, uh, the ch uh, ch children's pastor here, and I want to thank you for being here, Junior Crusaders, family, friends, and those of the airways. We're going to talk about being protected from that evil one, Mr. Satan. God provided us some protection. And just as he told Joshua to force out all of the people that lived in Canaan, because of their evil ways, they worshipped idols and did bad things. God told him to drive them out. God didn't want the Israelites to mix with the people who lived in Canaan. He knew what they did. It wouldn't be long before the Israelites would be doing the same thing. And he didn't want that. Today, even in our lives, we need to drive out the bad things that influence us. However, our enemy is not people. It's the enemy we cannot see. Our struggle is not against the flesh and blood, people, but against the spiritual forces of evil in the, heaven, evil in the heavenly realms. Ephesians 6, 12. But how can we have hope to fight against the evil forces that is invisible? How can we defend ourselves? Well, just as Joshua relied on God, so shall we rely on God for his help. We are not alone. None of us are alone. Remember, God's promise to Joshua, be strong, be courageous, courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1.9 Then God did give us, us spiritual armor to fight the spiritual battle. This is called the armor of God. It comes from God. We are to put on the full armor of God so that when our day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground wherever you have done in everything we stand. Once we are once we are on the God's side, we have everything we need to stand against our spiritual enemy, the devil, who is not pleased because we are not serving him anymore because we have Jesus. That's why it's important for us to wear the full armor of God and be ready to use our weapons, the sword that God has given us. The first part of the armor that he gave us is the belt of truth. The belt is white piece of armor that protects the middle part of the body. It's also used to keep the other pieces of the armor together. We put the belt of truth on when we learn about the truth. The important lessons that's in the Bible of Jesus Christ said, the word of God is truth, John 17, 17. We also need to live in the truth by being honest in what we do, what we say, being faithful. Next comes the breastplate. This is a part of the armor that covers our chest. 
from our head to our waist. And the most important thing that it protects is our heart. We need to guard our hearts against the, against the evils that, that once our hearts are most important and sensitive of us. Feeling the, of anger, jealousy, and or pride can pollute our heart and lead us to a strong, doing the strong, wrong things. Feeling a guilt, hurt, discouraged can clog up God's flowing blessings through us. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. On the other hand, love, peace, and joy can flow from our hearts to others and bubble over like sprinkling, sprinkling springs that have praise to the Lord. So when the enemy fires his fiery, sharp arrows at our hearts, we have armor for that, the righteousness, purity that comes from God through Jesus who washes our hearts clean. It says in Romans 3.22, this righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believes. We believe in Jesus, don't we? Yes, we do. Then God gives us shoes of the gospel of peace. The shoes protect our feet and help us to walk on slippery and uneven ground. When we walk in God's way, the road isn't always easy. We need the peace of God to give us a steady grip and protect our feet as we spread the good news that is the message of Jesus Christ, who came to this earth to be peace between God and man. Remember, he came as a baby, and, that, and he told them that he came to bring peace the angel said that he came to bring the good news to whom we are his favor. And then the next thing we have from the is our shield of faith. The shield really stops straps to the arm and is used to stop the sharp arrows of the enemy. In uh, Bible times, the arrows would be set alight and then would be shot and set onto wooden shields. To keep the shields from burning, soldiers would wrap, a, wrap in front of the shield a wet cloth to put out the fiery darts. Our enemy, the devil, shoots flaming arrows at us when we least expect it. The arrows that we cannot see with our eyes our, our lies, bad thoughts, and temptation to do wrong. The only way to stop those arrows is by putting on the complete trust in God and by believing that the Bible is true. When we read the Bible and do what it says, it is like keeping the wet cloth around the shield in order to put out those fiery arrows of doubt. Take up the shield of faith so that you can extinguish all flaming arrows of the evil one. Ephesians 6.16 6, We want to put out those fiery arrows. So comes, faith comes from hearing the message and the message is hearing through the word of Christ. Romans 10.17 we can do all things when we stand with Jesus, can't we? The next thing that comes up is the helmet of salvation. The devil did get, get you down, can get you down to think the wrong thoughts that can grow in your heart and feeling of defeat. And when it's protected by the armor, he moves up to our brain. He wants to our mind. He wants to lead us through to do bad things. 
and we keep thinking about those things. But we have the helmet of protection. In Roman days, the helmet of protection came down over our ears, across our mouths. It protects us, just like the helmet of salvation from God. When we receive the helmet of salvation, then we are saved, and we ask Jesus to be our Lord. Jesus renews our hearts by putting a new spirit in us. Ezekiel eleven nineteen, I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit. Isn't that exciting to have something new? The spirit in us. Our part uh, is to renew our minds by deciding which what we will watch, what we will what we decide to listen to. Do not be of this world. Have a renewing mind. What is it in this world that keeps us away from God? It, and are we supposed to be watching that, what's on TV? Are we supposed to be doing some of the things? The devil wants us to go down that wrong path. But if we have Jesus and ask him into our lives, he will renew us and make us fresh each day. God works in our hearts, and he wants our minds to make good choices. Then we have the sword of the spirit. This is the part of armor that we use to attack the enemy. The sword of the spirit is the word of God, the Bible. We don't use the Bible to fight people. We use it, the powerful words of the Bible, to fight against the forces of evil. For example, when the devil, the, for example, the devil tempts us to do wrong things. But we can remember the verses of the Bible to tell us what to do is right. Even the devil went after Jesus. Remember he tried to tempt him three times? What did Jesus do in that temptation? He used the word of God to fight him off. You, when you have the word of God in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, Satan has no control over you. Reading the Bible is a sure way to keep the devil from, from tricking us into with lies and give us confidence in the truth. When we are feel, feeling, feeling cost, some doubt, we still have the Bible to strengthen us. A sure way to be defeated is a sure way to be defeated is trying to fight the enemy on our own, saying, We got this. I can do it without God. But that's when the enemy comes on us. Each of us has battles that we in our lives that we have to fight. The battle against good and evil. We need to rely on the Lord at all times and ask him to help us. The Bible tells us to be strong in the Lord, in his mighty power, Ephesians 6.10. The glory of the victory God gave Joshua is a good example of what, me, what it means to trust the Lord, to do his part while we do ours. Our confidence and joy comes from knowing that Jesus has already won the battle for us. When he died on the cross, this is why we can say, the Lord is my strength, my song, and he has given me victory. Exodus 15, 2. That we can stand against the, the devil schemes, Ephesians 6, 11. We need the belt of truth, righteousness, will Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The breastplate of righteousness, judgment will, will again be found on the righteousness, and all the upright 
in hard will flow from it. Will follow it, sorry. Psalms 94, 5. We need the shoes a piece. It is written, how beautiful are the feet of him that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings and good things. Romans 10, 15. The shield of faith. Every word of God is flawless. He is the shield to those who take refuge in him. Proverbs 35. The helmet of salvation for God the Lord, the strength of my salvation. You have covered my head in the days of battle. The sword of the spirit for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than a, any two-edged sword and pierces even the division of the soul, the spirit, and of joints and marrow. It is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of our heart. Hebrews 4.12. So thank you, Lord, for having our backs. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for living inside of us. Thank you, God, for the armor that we put on daily to protect us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time that we could be together. I ask that you look after the children and the family and their friends. As they put on the armor to fight against Satan, I ask that you protect each one of them and see them safely through their days. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.